Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and as we continue with the tribute to Robin Williams, I'm going to review another film from 1991, and it happens to be my favorite also, called Hook. That's right, director Steven Spielberg's different take on the Peter Pan's new adventure, which basically is a story about what was it like if Peter Pan had grew up. Yeah, and I remember hearing about this film when it was in production back in the late 80s, early 90s when, when it first came out. And when I heard that they had Rob Williams, Dustin Hoffman, Julia Roberts, and even Bob Hoskins in this film, I was thinking to myself, yes, this had to be good. Not to mention that it was directed by Steven Spielberg, so... This had to be a good idea for Steven Spielberg to, to do a, a new take on Peter Pan after doing all of his great films in, in his career, you know, such as E.T., Jaws, Close Encounters of the Preferred Kind, and as well as Indiana Jones. Yeah, I was really excited because I always loved the Disney classic Peter Pan, and I always grew up watching all the Peter Pan you know, adventures that we had as follow because you know, it was really cool um, my personal favorite of, of Peter Pan has always been Tinkerbell yeah because she's you know the flying fairy that always has a lot of magical fairy dust and she, she can even do a lot of you know, creativity and build a lot of stuff that she, that she has you know. well this was a DVD I bought back in 2000 and nine when they had it for ten bucks at Albertsons. Yeah, it's it's from 2000. There's already a Blu-ray release of the film. Uh, I'm not so sure if it had extras or anything, but nevertheless, uh, at least this one had the original cover art that was in the poster. And yeah, and I think I remember seeing this movie in theaters at the Pacific Roxy Theater in Glendale. Yeah, it was owned by Pacific Theaters. At the time before it became uh, the Star's Palace, yeah, the same theater where I did the Tango shoot. Yeah, it, it it was like probably the most breathtaking film I ever saw. I, I loved the look of it, you know, with the set designs and everything they put into it. It felt more like a Peter Pan story already. Yeah. Even though I did have some problems with the, the whole story going on. Oh, and just to keep that a note, I also have a booklet, a production booklet from the movie as well, which is right here. Yeah, Hook. And it has all the pictures from the film. Yeah. You can see yeah, Rob Williams inside the bedroom. But, of course, his family had to stay there. You know, for a while, you know, as a visit, and, and of course, uh, Peter's children had one up in, in the bedroom, only to discover that they're missing. Yeah. yeah. There's a picture of Dustin Hoffman as Captain James Hook. Yeah. And boy, he, he really did a great job playing that role. And you can see all the pictures that follow. And there's Rob Williams, yeah, as Peter Pan. <laughs> or Peter Banning, as this is called. Yeah. Yeah, there's a shot of Rob Williams as Peter Pan, you know, flying to the rescue, going after those pirates, you know, with the help of the Lost Boys. Yeah. Not the Lost Boys from 1987, though. There's Julia Roberts as Tinkerbell. Yeah. I thought she was very beautiful in this one. Um, Bob Hoskins. Yeah, as Smee. <laughs> yeah. Kevin James Hook's assistant. And cousin as well. Yeah. <laughs> With Maggie Smith, yeah, as uh, Wendy, and a lot older than that, as a grandmother. 
course, the Lost Boys. <laughs> yeah, including Rofio and all the rest. Yeah. And here's the last one. Yep, Robin Williams as Peter Pan, with all, along with the Lost Boys, you know, cheering for victory. Yeah, now that they're all saved. On the back is Dustin Hoffman, Steven Spielberg, Bob Hoskins, and Robin Williams. It even has the quote that says, Steven Spielberg director, what if Peter Pan grew up? Yeah. Yeah, my aunt had gave me this a long time ago, after this movie came out. It was cool. I'm so happy I still own this today. So, it was cool. So, we're going to get to the review now, because I really want to get this movie pumped up. The movie stars Robin Williams, Dustin Hoffman, Julia Roberts, Bob Hoskins, Maggie Smith, Gwyneth Paltrow, Charlie Cosmo, Amber Scott, Caroline Girdall, and Dante Bascal. And it's directed by Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Once again, our legendary filmmaker of all time. The movie begins when a successful corporate lawyer named Peter Banning, who's played by Robin Williams, has been having a difficult time with his relationship on his family, especially his two young children named Jack and Maggie, who are both played by Charlie Cosmo and Amber Scott. Dealing with closing a business deal, which causes the absences and broken promises from them, his wife, Mora, who's played by Caroline Goodall, has struggled to keep them together and grows very frustrated with Peter's behavior, which that leads to one of the biggest problems was when Peter did not attend to one of Jack's baseball games, yeah, which causes Jack to be very frustrated with him, yeah, even during his last day of work. The family had flown to London you know, just to visit Maura's grandmother, Wendy Darling, who's played by Maggie Smith, who actually helped Peter find a family when he was a young orphan and as a child inspired her neighbor J.M. Barry you know, just to write the story about Peter Pan and Wendy, yeah, which that's pretty much what it's adapted by. They also meet an elderly gentleman named Toodles, you know, who's played by Arthur Mallet, who actually, indeed, lost his marbles. Of course, uh, Wendy's first orphan. But after Peter started to yell at the kids when they were trying to have fun with him, you know, since he was already, you know, making a, a cell phone call with, with one of his partners on, on closing that business deal, which se seems to go extremely wrong. Yeah. Mora had angrily at Peter and warns him that he's driving the kids away. And that, that became a problem. So during that night, you know, while they went to back to sleep in, in the bedroom where you know where Wendy and and, and all the rest had stayed at the time, Peter, Mora, and Wendy had attended a ceremony for the expansion of Wendy's orphanage at, at the hospital for sick children. And while they're out though, suddenly Peter's kids have winds up being kidnapped and it has a note with a dagger that's signed by Captain James Hook, who's played by Dustin Hoffman, that, that they just found inside the bedroom door. So so after the police, including the police inspector that's played by Phil Collins, had left for the night, Randy has revealed that Peter may be what he thinks he is the legendary Peter Pan, since he may be indeed, you know, crossed over by his old enemy who just came back to life as, as part of his revenge against, against him. So, but the problem is, he actually had failed to remember him, and he, and he proceeds by staying up drinking upstairs in the bedroom until he finally meets a fairy named Tinkerbell, who's played by Julia Roberts, yeah. and and while and while he actually joined him 
to, to go on this quest to, to never never land just to, to see where the children are located he wants to be an awakening inside the pirate ship that features many pirates including the one and only Captain James Hook along with his partner Smee who's played by Bob Hoskins and they both had Fred and the children unless they accepted Hook's challenge to a duel against them. Well, they all try to figure it out that he may be what he thinks he is, but only there are times when they thought that it isn't the Peter Pan they all know and, and remember. So once uh, Peter was trying to save the kids by being trapped, they had realized that Peter has been out of shape, terrified of heights, and, and have no recollection of his former life to many of the battles so as a result they dumped him inside the ocean and and once you see there there's there's three mermaids you know floating by and and he finally went all the way to the land where the lost boys has been hidden yeah and once they came by they were going after him until only to discover that he might be what he thinks he is you know, the legendary Peter Pan. The only problem is, though, since this was part of um, Tinkerbell's plan to have Captain James Hook to have only three days to to be able to reveal himself as Peter Pan, he has to you know think of happy thoughts, and all of his imagination, the magic, and all this other stuff, and and everything that he remembered just to. Re we collect all the memories that he had before he grew up and so that means that after all this time he can finally remember everything that he can can to do and and try to in order to now finally become what he thinks he is and once he finally became who he is now he finally gets his challenge already with Kevin James Hook to a duel and that's where him and the Lost Boys decide to to go after you know, Hook and and the rest of the pirates to to stop him and try to save his kids from being part of uh, Hook's plan to you know to kill them or so. Well, Peter finally you know, got rid of him. Yeah, after that last battle, he finally saved his children from him. So the whole town was saved by Peter and his kids have finally returned back to Wendy's home along with him. So everything was as good as gold. And, and well, it did have its problems when it comes to the adaptation of a Peter Pan story. I did enjoy it. I mean, it's, it's not great when it comes to all the other previous Peter Pan stories. Or movies so to speak I know we had the Disney version as we all know and remembered and I agree the Disney version was one of the best ones ever made and so was the other one with uh, Mary Martin that was an NBC special a long time ago back in the 60s I thought it was worth watching it had some beautiful set designs that they put into this movie it felt more like it definitely is a Peter Pan story as we all know and love and I thought you know I thought the cast was actually very good. I mean, yes, I know there were some problems with some of the actors in the movie, like especially the kids, you know, like Charlie Cosmo and Amber Scott. Yeah, I know Amber Scott was from the movie Field of Dreams. Um, there, there are times when I thought, you know, they were, they were pretty bad at acting. I mean, don't get me wrong though, they were okay in the movie. But there were times when I think they were just, you know, awful. So, that's my point, too. But then, um, I thought the cast, including Dustin Hoffman, was, was excellent. He was definitely the right choice to play Captain James Cook when it comes to this. Because there are times when I didn't think, you know, that it actually was Dustin Hoffman, you know, playing in, in disguise as that role. Because... You know, he's such a great actor when it comes to all the films he's been doing. Yeah, he's a versatile actor. 
Yeah, he did a lot of roles such as movies like The Graduate, The Straw Dogs, uh, Midnight Cowboy, and Kramer vs. Kramer, and, and of course Rain Man. He, he definitely really pulled this movie off and that was the main reason to see this movie because of his performance. And it was definitely his good performances all the way. He was actually nominated for a Golden Globe for that role as well. So it was cool. Yeah, unfortunately, lost it to Rob Williams <laughs> in, in the Fisher King, though. <laughs> yeah, hard to believe, isn't it? Because apparently he would have been nominated, too, for this film. Which I think he would have been, actually. But Rob Williams was actually very good as well, too. I mean, yeah, at first he did start it out, you know, what, he, what you think he is, you know, because he is indeed a lawyer. But he's always had a, a really tough behavior when it comes to that. Yeah, that was so frustrating that, you know, it's like he doesn't spend more time with his family. And I know that's a shame, too. But, you know, to be fair, you know, he had to work so hard these days that, you know, it's kind of hard to keep up. Because even though he is indeed what he thinks he is, but he just doesn't even remember who he was. So that's the sad part. And I feel sorry for him, too, because after all this time, you know, he knew he wanted to be what he really is. He was afraid of growing up. But until he finally, you know, having some times dealing with it, but he was even happier when he now has a family. You know, he has children now, so, you know, at least now things can go pretty well. But the problem is, with all the work that's been going through, yeah, that's how it, it happened. Julia Roberts as Tinkerbell. It, it's funny too. I heard they did they actually nominated her for a rat seat, which I don't understand. I mean, yes, I know she kind of goes a little over the top with her role, nevertheless, because I think she was very beautiful, you know, playing a fairy. You know, because at the time, Julia Roberts was like one of the most high profile actresses of all time, you know, coming from her role in movies like. Steel Magnolias, Mystic Pizza, and of course, Pretty Woman. <laughs> yeah. So I thought she was actually good in this, and I had no problem with her. I mean, yeah. And uh, Bob Hoskins, too, you know, playing Smee. Yeah, he was also very good, too. <laughs> in fact, he was sort of a steel stealing role, as it turned out to be. Yeah. And he actually turned out to be a great guy. I mean, even though he was a villain, you know, working with <laughs> Captain James Hook. Well, and the Lost Boys, though, yeah, the Lost Boys, with all the actors, including the the black fat kid, you know, he was, although, yeah, he was cool, too, I, I like that guy. And, and Rofio, too, you know, the Asian kid. They were all cool. I, I, I just love this. And, and the fact that they were battling against Captain James Hook and all the rest of the pirates, that was a classic. I mean, they, they had a lot of funny moments there and everything that went into it. Yeah. But everything in the movie was as beautiful as I can, can imagine when I saw this. They, they knew exactly how this had to be adapted. And I think, you know, as far as Steven Spielberg's concerned, I think he did a very good job. It also became a highest grossing film in the decade of the 90s so they only had 70 million dollars in the budget that they made for this movie and went up a lot higher than that so I knew this was going to be cool it's just sad that this movie had negative reviews towards critics you know, including Cisco and Eber I, I just didn't understand I mean yes the movie had its flaws I sensed that too there were tons of flaws in this movie I mean especially the, the whole the telling of the story I, I didn't think it wasn't that bad. I mean, it's not great. Uh, and I love everything that went into this production. I think this was the film that Steven Spielberg really wanted to do before, you know, he's been having some trouble with, with some studio issues and all this other stuff. Because, you know, he had to continue doing all the Indiana Jones movies and all this other stuff that he was doing. So he couldn't do Peter Pan until later on. So now he finally had a chance. You know, with the studio, you know, TriStar, and, and, and Nick Castle, and all the rest to help the things out. So maybe it'll be quite as successful as they were hoping for. So, yeah. 
I also find it funny though that that Michael Jackson was going to be set to star in this movie too, as Peter Pan. As I read some of the this, the background in production when they first announced this, the studio was going to be from Walt Disney and Paramount, which happens to be the same studios that gave us Popeye, and you know, also with Walt Williams. So that's interesting enough. That would be really cool though if if Michael Jackson had played Peter Pan. I mean, it doesn't matter if, if he's in a different race. I think this would be really awesome. Kind of like when he did Captain EO. The movie also had a wonderful score by John Williams. You know, he did a very good job you know, scoring this film. Yeah, it, it was so beautiful the way this music was going for. And since this was the same man that gave us the score for you know, Star Wars and Indiana Jones and all the rest of the films that he's been doing. Yeah, so this worked pretty well. But if you love um, Peter Pan and all his other adaptations, I think you're definitely going to enjoy Pope. Especially if you love pirates and all this other stuff, this will definitely be worth watching. Just be prepared though, you, you might be disappointed with some of the scenes that they put into the film or any of this other stuff that I think I understand why, why some critics and, and some people reaction would felt exactly the same way. But other than that though, I enjoyed it. I, I loved it. It became one of my childhood favorites. Yeah, it's worth it. So anyway, I give the movie Hook three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.